Hello class, for the next couple of weeks we are going to be focusing on biographies and influential events in history. Today I have brought a book on Harriet Tubman. Can anyone tell me who she is or her impact on society? Great job! For today's class we are going to be looking over the components of what makes a good biography, why are they important? Alright class, to learn more about biography, I am going to be reading a book about Harriet Tubman. So first of all, can anyone tell me who Harriet Tubman is? Yes, she was a slave who freed herself and ended up freeing more slaves. So she is a very historically significant African American um, that we're going to be learning more about. So this book is called Harriet Tubman, Black Liberator, written by Matthew G. Grant, illustrated by John Keeley and Dick Brood. Just some images. Really, really beautiful illustrations. Okay. Slave Girl in Maryland. A slave girl, six years old, was considered old enough to work. So in 1826, little Araminta was taken from her mother and made to do housework. If she worked slowly, she was beaten. When the war ended in 1865, she was working at a hospital caring for free slaves. Worn out, she went to Auburn, New York, where her old parents now lived. The 13th Amendment to the Constitution wiped out slavery in the United States, but Harriet saw that black people were still poor and uneducated. She opened her home to any poor black person who needed help. Later, she founded a rest home selling vegetables to support the old and the sick who depended on her. Harriet Tubman died on March 10, 1913. She was buried in full military honors. Okay, so before I dive more into Harriet Tubman and the certain components of biography within it, um, I'm going to first identify some of the things I'm going to be looking for. So things like birth date, death date, place of birth, um, their education, work experience, accomplishments, and their lasting impact on society. Um, not all of these components are always going to be seen within the book, such as usually birth date and death date aren't always in the book, but sometimes they are and those are the kind of things that you're wanting to look for. Alright, so in this book, um, the author doesn't directly state her place of birth or her birthday, however, we can infer this through context clues. So, first page, the first paragraph is called Slave Girl in Maryland. So we can infer that she was probably born in Maryland or around Maryland. Um, and then also in 1826, she was six years old. So that tells us she was probably born around 1820. Um, moving on to her education, we do not see anywhere in the book that she had a formal education because instead she was working as a slave for her master. So some of the things that she did was housework, which is what we learned on the first page. And then we learned that when she was full grown, um, she was as powerful as a man and she chopped wood, cleared fields and did a man's work for her master. So those are just like some of the jobs that she did as a slave. Moving on to her accomplishments, we learned that her first one was probably freeing herself so or through the underground railroads so um so we learned that the underground railroads weren't actually a train but it was a chain of houses that people who hated slavery would allow um slaves trying to free themselves to stay in their houses um and travel northward so that was her first accomplishment she ended up going back and freeing her family and then we learned that in 19 trips to the South, she rescued more than 300 men, women, and children, which is a huge accomplishment on her part. We later learned that um, as the Civil War began, she served as a spy and a scout for the United Forces, and she um, organized guerrilla bands, and together they, sla they saved 800 slaves. So major accomplishments. Um, as for lasting experience, um, she continued to, after the 13th Amendment came out, she continued to support shelter black slaves. Um, she 
was always um, an advocate for freeing black slaves and for the black community in general. So this is the biggest thing that she stood up for. Um, we also learned on the last page that she died on March 10th, 1913. So that is her death date. And she was buried with full military honors, which we can understand why. So that's a little bit about Harriet Tubman and the components of biography within this book. All right, so now that y'all somewhat understand the biography and the elements that go into it, we are going to popcorn read Coretta King, A Woman of Peace as a class, and then I will let y'all help me find the elements that make this a biography. So I'll start and then you guys can read. Coretta slowly hung up the phone. One look at her face told her sister Edith something was wrong. What is it, Corey? she asked. They've burned our house down, Coretta said slowly. Our beautiful furniture. It's all gone. The two sisters looked at each other in dismay. For nine years, the family had lived in a house with just two small rooms, a kitchen and a bedroom. The floors were bare pine and the paper was peeling off the walls. Water had to be carried in from the well in the backyard. Finally, their father had saved enough to rent a six-room house. To Edith and Coretta, it seemed like a palace. They had a bedroom all to their own. So after the class is finished reading Coretta King, A Woman of Peace, um, I've let them discuss and tell me um, the elements of the book that make it a, bi a biography. Um, and if they are struggling or need help, then that's when I will step in and help them. But I will ask them and have them lead the discussion more just so I can get an understanding if they understand um, the components of a biography. One of my favorite biographies is Arthur Mitchell. This is about um, an African-American ballet dancer. He is very, very famous and now owns the Dance Theater of Harlem. So very, very good. Another one of my favorite biographies is Grandfather's Journey by Alan Say. This um, is a little bit different than the Arthur Mitchell book in that it has way more images, beautifully, beautifully illustrated. Um, this is about Alan Say's grandfather and his love for both California and Japan. Okay, class, please make sure that everything on the worksheet is complete. This means that your worksheet must include the following. Your name, well, your group's name, the biography of, and then the person's name, there has to be a picture. If you don't want to have a picture right now, you can put it in your poster later. The early life, this includes their education, if they had one, where they went, and their habits. Family life includes if they have a mom, a sister, a father, whatever, or even a non-blood related um, relation. Major accomplishments, this is the description of what made them who they are and why there's a biography about them. And interesting facts, you can make the next one. Interesting facts that you feel compelled to write about can be included in this as well. This will be used as a backdrop of your final poster that you will be doing in a few minutes. Okay, good job everyone. Thank you for presenting your posters. The last part of this lesson is to write a reflection. Within this reflection, you guys will need to include what you've learned about biographies and why they are important. You will have to include an example within this. In this reflection, you will also have to include what biography you had. It doesn't have to be your own. It could be whatever anyone else presented that you liked. Uh, what was the, and why it was the most interesting to you and why it impacted you the most. I want you guys to reflect on why this person made an impact on you and what literary elements of a biography are important and why they were mentioned within the biography and the other student's presentation or your own. Lastly, you guys need to write about what you thought about this assignment in, in general and how you guys worked as a team, what you individually contributed and so on. Okay. Once the students have presented their posters and written their reflections, I will come to the front of the classroom and ask them to recite the key elements of a biography to me. Um, after that, I will open the floor for any remaining questions or discussion. That is our lesson plan. Thank you for watching.